Hello, I'm M.G. Boutet. Today's discussion will be on the uh, Irish Owens, the uh, origins and historicity of uh, the, uh, this uh, form of writing. The long-held argument that uh, the Ogam was uh, the creation of clerics based on material evidence uh, from around the 5th century uh, CE does not uh, take into consideration uh, the earlier uh, continental archaeological and uh, epigraphic data. There is also uh, much to be gleaned from the studies of comparative uh, myths uh, on the subject of uh, writing prior to the introduction of the alphabet, the importance of uh, sacred syllables, termed mantra in Sanskrit and kainti in Old Irish explains why graphic representations uh, should not be taken for abstract symbols, but mnemonic uh, characters, um, uh, ciphers, uh, Preceding the adoption of alphabets uh, also to be considered is a great diversity of codes, symbols, and de designations uh, for the ogams. The tendency for the uh, any uh, art system demonstrates that the more uh, it is ancient, uh, the more likely uh, it is uh, expanded. And this is exactly what we find uh, with the many uh, expressions of ogam in the Book of Ballymote, of course. Uh, uh, these are late um, medieval um, manuscripts. Um, we, we should not look there for the origins of uh, the Oums. Uh, the, um, the origins of the Oums, uh, and this is my opinion, uh, predate um, uh, the uh, Christian uh, Christianizing period uh, where the uh, missionaries uh, would have uh, supposedly uh, introduced this uh, synthetic uh, form uh, of writing uh, to um, uh, bring uh, writing uh, to the masses, uh, to Christianize them. Uh, however, this is a very unlikely uh, uh, since um, they wouldn't have went through uh, this effort to give uh, these uh, poor uh, peasants, um, illiterate peasants, um, another way of divining uh, using uh, ciphers uh, which could act as abstract uh, symbols uh, for divination, <laughs> you know. And then they say, the Druids had nothing to do with it. Um, nothing there, nothing there, nothing to see here. Uh, and, uh, you know, um, the Druids were, uh, were long gone when the, the Ogums uh, appeared, and therefore the Druids uh, were not the ones who, uh, were, who ever used uh, these... Um, so I would uh, rest uh, assured, uh, you know, uh, from what uh, my research and from um, I went through many of uh, my papers, uh, past papers, many of the um, my colleagues and some of the experts uh, who looked into this um, all agree that um, uh, the best studies are sitting there on the uh, shelves of the, the, of the uh, university libraries or the uh, Centre National de Recherche in Paris, and so, you know, the these experts who have uh, really uh, studied uh, ancient epigraphy and uh, the ancient rock art um, wouldn't even consider uh, to 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 treat these uh, these uh, symbols or these um, the, the, these panels of rock art as uh, forms of writing. So you know, they they just left it there and unnoticed and. But what is interesting is, um, as we will see, uh, some of these panels uh, not only uh, depict the olums, um, uh, they also um, show um, very um, distinct uh, forms of um, uh, Iberian uh, script, uh, especially the North Iberian script uh, in the Pyrenees Mountains. And so we find these uh, same scripts together uh, with the Ogums uh, in on these uh, these rock art panels, and they are translatable in the same language, uh, so same archaic language. Very few words of uh, Iberian were found, and many of these uh, were uh, solely in 
in Iberian Celtic or um, possibly just a Gallic. But, uh, you know, we know from uh, the biography of St. Patrick, the uh, Christian life of St. Patrick, that the uh, Anachorite uh, would um, have burned uh, at least uh, 80 Druidic books. Um, an interesting detail for, contrary to what uh, we may conclude uh, from Caesar, that the Druids uh, did keep records, but that they didn't consign um, their philosophy um, uh, to writing. And so... Um, they just a few uh, accounts supposedly according to the romans uh, in using the greek alphabet but was it uh, really the greek alphabet or was it um iberian which uh, looks uh, very close to uh, to the uh, greek alphabet uh, it both alphabets uh, could be uh, confused of course and so um of course the yogams are not an alphabet uh, per se it's not an alphabet uh, some people, you know, have argued that, oh, yes, it uh, it starts with uh, Beth, you know, um, Beth Lysnion or um, Beth Lysfian, or And Beth is, you know, the same as uh, Alpha Beta or uh, Beth uh, uh, as the um, uh, semantic, uh, proto-semantic letter uh, for B, you know. Uh, this, this is... Um, just probably a, a later uh, the interpretation of the, the, the letter, I find. Uh, to me, uh, the, um, all of the, Indo the early Indo-European scripts or forms of writing uh, or ciphers are all, um, they, 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 they're all based on cosmographical uh, con con considerations. Uh, like, uh, let's say, um, star patterns, you know, uh, cycles, uh, big big cosmic cycles of the sun and um, of the big cosmic wheel, uh, the um, circumpolar stars, uh, and so this is uh, prevalent in all of uh, the um, early Indo-European cultures, and um, even with the uh, proto-Semitic um, alphabet, we find that um, so some um, some interpretations where it is said um, in the early Hebrew texts that. Um, uh, the letters uh, match uh, the stars in the heavens and things like that. So uh, early on, we have this idea that um, uh, the, the star patterns uh, could be interpreted as um, as uh, symbols or sounds or you know cosmic sounds. And this is exactly what the Vedas also uh, mention. According to the uh, currently held academic theory, uh, the Irish uh, Oems resulted from the modification of the Roman alphabet, and this means that the Oems, based on the uh, archaeological data, can only be at best uh, dated to the time of um, Ireland's um, uh, Christianization uh, by the uh, followers of St. Patrick around the 5th uh, or 6th uh, centuries uh, CE, and this argument is solely based on epigraphic evidence uh, that this is what the archaeologists really love you know the hard material evidence but what i'm going to do is i'm going i use um a um, my methodology is the one used for uh, art history this is what I, I was mainly trained in art history and so uh, the irvin panofsky's uh, methodology uh, uh, for icons iconography iconography and imagery and things like that and um, also, um, let's uh, use um, Dumézil's um, comparativist uh, methodology uh, for Indo-European cultures and mythologies. And this works best, you know, combine these together and we have a winning uh, methodology uh, for understanding um, early alphabets, especially the Oems. And this even goes for the runes, uh, for the uh, Scandinavian or Germanic runes, which you know I, I looked into also, and it compares well. And the Oems also compare well with the uh, the runes in that they're not alphabets; they don't go by the definition of an alphabet, and in that they don't use uh, the the name for for the letters. Uh, the the name, names for the le letters are not the same. And in the Oems, uh, there are uh, also um, um, ligatures and uh, you know uh, cons consonantal clusters, so um, and also um, diphthongs. Uh, so this really does not. Um, it, it resembles more the Iberian scripts if you really want to compare. And uh, in my mind, the Oems uh, these are the direct descendant, or they were um, 
uh, created uh, from uh, the Iberian script. Um, and this can be shown by the, uh, the, the uh, Iberian material or the southern uh, uh, Gaul uh, petroglyphs or the petroglyphs in the Seine Valley, uh, which are around Fontainebleau. And many of um, the, um, the albums uh, illustrated in the Book of Ballymote, um, uh, the symbols and um, the um, ciphers uh, correspond uh, with um, the, those found in the Book of Ballymote. So there is much to be gained there in comparing these, uh, these symbols and these, the, the, this rocker. So this would have had to be uh, the work of uh, evidently the Druids, uh, of course, because uh, we have the Irish mythology, which clearly uh, shows us that um, the Druids did um, emigrate from that area of uh, southern Gaul, northern Iberia, or northern Spain, uh, to Ireland. Uh, and we have uh, the Milesian uh, migrations um, in the takings of Ireland, the books of the uh, taking of Ireland. And so, you know, it, there's enough to go by here to, to have a good idea of what's going on. Okay, so um, so the argument that um, you know the Ogans, um, you know they they were meant f to commemorate uh, the deceased on on uh, funerary uh, stellas, you know, uh, monuments, uh, is you know in my mind um, probably a later evolution, and it's a Christian um, adaptation of the earlier forms of uh, uh, with uh, during the. Um, pre-Christian, let's say, pagan uh, era, the, um, there was two forms of uh, writing uh, that uh, the, um, the scribes used. Um, there was a devotio and um, the evocatio, you know. These um, uh, were uh, meant uh, for the other world, uh, for communication with the other world. And so in that way, uh, it would make sense uh, in a Christian context that... Um, priests um, would, um, you know, knowing that uh, St. Peter holds the keys to the gates of heaven, that um, these uh, keys, that these early keys of divination, which were the omens, would be used um, as um, inscriptions to, um, um, let's say, announce uh, to uh, the, the angelic beings and to St. Peter that uh, so-and-so uh, was... Um, coming to the gates of heaven. And so uh, in that, that way, it would have been um, a perfect memorization um, of um, the, uh, the old system. And so it would have been uh, carried on into the, uh, the Christian mindset. And so there are uh, bilingual inscriptions in Goidelic consisting of oems and uh, Latin letters, of course, ranging from the Isle of Man, Southern Wales, uh, Devon, and in the light of this, the Oghams could um, only be seen as um, contemporaneous uh, to the Romanizing uh, uh, of, uh, of the islands. Um, and so, um, therefore, um, having nothing to do uh, with the Druids, they think, um, uh, but more with the, um, the Kyldi, uh, which I doubt, you know. So in the, bo the book of Balamot would be, let's say, uh, carry uh, over, uh, you know, it would have been a, a heritage, at, um, you know, a, tra a transmission that would have been carried on from from the medieval ages um, uh, in the bardic schools, uh, and this is something they would have um, had um, uh, used uh, during the pre-Christian era, and so they were mainly uh, working along with the um, material that they already knew and they already had, and so by the uh, 13th and 12th century, uh, the, 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 these manuscripts were just consigning earlier manuscripts that would have been kept in, in, in the monasteries. And so, well, no, no use uh, citing uh, Caesar on what he said about the, uh, the Druids uh, writing. Uh, this is, is already mentioned a lot. But let's just say that, um, you know, uh, just to remind everybody that uh, what he said was that um, uh, young men have uh, to memorize endless verses and that some of them spend the long, as long as 20 years at their books, at their books, so they had books. Uh, and for although the Druids employ 
Greek characters, as I mentioned, for almost all of their secular business, such as public and private accounts. They consider it irrelevant to commit their lore to writing, and I suspect that Caesar speaking. However, that double motive underlies the practice, the unwillingness uh, to publicize their teaching, and the desire uh, to prevent uh, students from relying upon the written word uh, at the expense of memory training for the recourse of their textbooks almost invariably discourage learning by heart uh, learning by heart uh, to um, dull the the powers of memory so this is uh, pretty much uh, what you know is always cited when we want to uh, uh, show that the druids didn't write uh, you know but it leaves out um, some of the um, the important things uh, that the Druids did do. And so, um, so according to the uh, Romans, um, uh, the, the first seven uh, letters of the Greek alphabet um, were kept by the fates, uh, the fate fairies, uh, the goddesses who presided over the destinies of mortals. And we find the same thing uh, with the, the Celts, uh, with uh, the Irish. Uh, and that um, Agma was um, the god who invi invented uh, the uh, the olums, and also you have in uh, the Bardas, which is a late um, 17th century or 16th century uh, manuscripts, Bardic manuscripts uh, consigned by the Williams, that a certain Anigan, uh, the giant, um, was the one who um, who invented uh, the uh, Kolbren. And so, uh, but you know, as as you know, um, Britannic, um, uh, the 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 Gallics uh, were also Britannic, and you, this uh, again, uh, you can find the name is Anicantos, and Anigantos, and, and it's uh, also a month name, and it's um, it means uh, the calamitous, um, the terrible one, and so. Uh, you have this uh, notion as, you know, Ogma was also a terrible um, deity in that um, he was the god of eloquence, uh, a, a war god. He was uh, Heracles, uh, the Hercules of, uh, of, the, uh, of the Celts in general, the Agnios in Gaul and uh, Ogma. Okay. And this, um, okay, pretty much explains the... Um, the unity in the myths surrounding uh, this invention of writing. And the Greek uh, poet uh, Ovid in his uh, fables evokes uh, the seven fate uh, symbols which were in use uh, in the past. Uh, and he writes that, that um, Ovid writes in his fables, uh, thereafter uh, Palamedes, uh, son of uh, Naupius, uh, invented 11 more taking the count to 18. Then it was said that um, Epi uh, Carmus, uh, uh, or Carmos uh, of Sicily added uh, Theta and He, and then P, and then Psi. So according to others, uh, the last letters, uh, Omega, Epsilon, Zeta, and Psi, and Phi were added by uh, Simonides uh, to this uh, early uh, script. And older accounts mention that um, after uh, seeing a flight of cranes, notice the cranes, uh, again, a link to the fate fairies, and we have the same with the Celtic uh, myths, uh, that they uh, took different shapes. So Hermes was inspired to, to transcribe these into symbols uh, for writing. Hermes. So we can say that this uh, Agma or Agmios is uh, the Gallic or Gaelic uh, Hermes. Okay? In short, uh, the many variants of alphabets um, originally used in Greece became standardized only at a much later date. That's around uh, 403 BC. And could the Greek authors have confused the origin myths of earlier forms of writing to that of the introduction of the alphabet borrowed from the Phoenicians and attributed to a certain Cadmos, Latinized as Cadmus. Uh, reportedly, it was a um, certain Prince Cadmos, founder of Thebes and brother of Europa, 
who first taught the alphabet to the people of Bosha. So the same theme could also hold for the dual origin myths found in Irish lore. Uh, one of these is uh, the one attributed to the uh, Persian Phineas Farsad, who brought the, uh, the Bol Bileth to Ireland from Scythia after the dispersion of peoples from the Tower of Nimrod. This is, of course, this of course was a Christian Irish rendition of the biblical story of the fabled Tower of Babel and the mixing of tongues. All right, so just a little um, note here. If uh, I butcher uh, some of the languages here, you know, it can be Greek or Latin or uh, please excuse me, uh, or Gaelic. Uh, I probably have a better handle on Gaelic. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, if, pardon my French. <laughs> okay, um, so... Um, once, uh, according uh, to the Labor Gabala Eren of the Book of Takings of Ireland, the Irish Scots had come out of Scythia, being the direct descendants of one Phineas Farsad, a uh, Farsad, uh, uh, king of Scythia, Phineas Farsad, and his son uh, Nel went uh, into Asia to work on the Tower of Nimrod and were thus present at the subsequent dispersal of the races after the destruction of the tower. And Phineas and his son were both erudite of the new languages which resulted from the, this dispersal, who thereafter returned to Scythia, where uh, Phineas uh, opened a celebrated school of languages on the Scythian plain. Herewith is a passage from the Araisetnanech on the origins of the alphabet. Eh? So on the alphabet, uh, for example, uh, for an author's uh, selection or for selecting of words, uh, for example, of voc vocables, uh, vocable, or uh, the selection of a tower, or from the word uh, abecedarium, abecedarium, for example, uh, the beginning, or is that which ripens, uh, their speech for everyone or alphabet that is placing a B or is it that, that which ripens in Gaelic, insipit in Latin, apix in Greek, A, B, C, D, D, B, um in Hebrew. So this is uh, from the Raisep. Uh, then on the Yogam, um, the Yoraisep has this to say, uh, the Book of Balamot letters, the Book of Balamot letter ascriptions are replaced with biblical names, okay? So we uh, now 25 uh, persons that were the noblest of them. These are the names of them, after whom are named uh, the Yogam. Uh, vowels and consonants, and here are their names, uh, Babel, Loth, Farol, Salyath, Nebuchadnezzar, Herod, David, Telamon, Kai, uh, Kelyan, um, Muriath, uh, Gutli, Gomer, uh, Stru, Ruben, Akab, Roy, Zurith, Jesus. Uh, boy, that, that's a, hmm, interesting. Uh, Yakim, uh, Ethrochius, Wimelicus, uh, you. Eudonius, uh, Afrim, Ordines, uh, these are the names of the 24, 25 persons, the noblest, uh, that were in Phineas' school. And uh, others again say that um, this is the alphabet which was invented in Akkad and at the causeway of the great uh, estuary that Amergen, son of Mil, invented the Beth Luis of the Owens. Oh boy. So this Mil, okay. Milesius or Milesius or Miletos in, in, in Old Celtic means uh, the havoc. Same as with um, the other, um, the one who invented the Oms, uh, the uh, Enigan, uh, or this um, uh, Heracles or uh, this Hermes. Uh, so we have him here, uh, you know, uh, so he's from Spain, of course. And so this really um, tells you, okay, so 
these organs they came from Spain yeah, okay right so should we trust uh, this um, legend uh, I think so it sounds logical okay from reading this passage we learned that garbled uh, pseudo Semitic names are awarded uh, to 25 characters of the Ogums in line with the school of Phineas Farset. Also noteworthy is um, the following mention that the alphabet was invented in Akkad. So one thing about this uh, Farset, you know, this is the uh, Gaelic name uh, for Persian, you know, Persian. So it means a uh, uh, Finn, uh, Phineas is a Latinized version. Uh, Finn, the Persian, you know, but um, in fact, he was um, Milesius, uh, the um, Span Spaniard. And that it, through a traditional initiation of the Yogam, the causeway of the great est uh, estuary, that the Beth Luis was invented by a Mergen, a son of Mil of Spain. Mil of uh, Spain. So if we are to trust these medieval uh, uh, texts. Uh, it appears that the alphabet was invented uh, in Akkad, in Mesopotamia, and that the Beth Lisnion was invented by the Milesian Amergen of Spain, and that this Akkadian attribution is probably uh, about the Greek Cadmos, uh, uh, and it resembles uh, the Cadmos theme that we find in Greece. So this is something that could have come to the monks, the Christians, uh, since they, they also spoke Greek and they were from the Alexandrian school of Christianity. So to summarize, in Greece we have linear A and B and these are pre-alphabetic, okay? And then in Ireland we have the Yogan, okay? And this, in my mind, is also pre-alphabetic. So for the, um, for the, the linear A and B, during uh, the Trojan War, um, this uh, Palamedes uh, of uh, Argos, uh, son of uh, Naupios, and a descendant of Belos, Be check the name, Belos, Bel, and Danaos, check the name, Danaos, Dan, Danu, invents numbers and dice, adds uh, 11 more symbols to the seven symbols of the fate fairies. Okay, then we have a different myth in Greece about the invention of the alphabet. The Phoenician Cadmos, founder of Thebes and brother of Europa, first taught the alphabet to the people of Boeotia. This makes sense. So it would have come into Greece through Boeotia. And for the Oems, we have the Irish Oems, the Om symbols were the creation of Agma, son of Vilatha, and the god of eloquence and poetry. And others give the druid Amergen, Amorgan, and it, as its inventor. Knowledge of the symbols was to be shared by the learned and kept from the non-initiated. Okay, so this means that these were symbolic uh, of something or ciphers or symbols okay more than just letters of an alphabet but then we have the mention of the bobileth and we know that bobileth is the uh, gaelic version of the hebrew bible okay in that you have leth for lath which means um the laths were um, pages of a book, okay? So this is the, the Bible laths. So the Babylath was given to the Gaels by Phineas Farse of Scythia from Akkad after the first language was brought from the Tower of Nimrod. Okay, so the cl classical authors who historicized their myths did so contrary to the Celts who mythicized, mythicized their history, often described Celtic mythos as it had happened. And this is the case for many things about the Celts, the perception of the Celts by the Greeks and the Romans. So the oldest examples of Talisines 
three, uh, tree battle came not from the Welsh manuscripts, but from a Roman source that follows, what follows here, a quote from uh, the Roman historian Livy, explaining the battle of the Cisalpine, Cisalpine Gaulish uh, battle of trees, which um, uh, was called Litana Widua, the broad forest, which would have been probably the earlier version of the Battle of Trees of Talisine, the poem. So, in BC, uh, uh, you know, before the Common Era, uh, 216, it was a year of dire tribulations. Postumius, the chosen council, that was a son who was born after the, the death of the father, this is, you know, nine months uh, after the conception. So the chosen consul perished with all of his troops on the Roman side of the Alps in the Cisalpine region. In this area, there was a vast forest, which the Gauls called Litania, and which he was to lead his army. And uh, here is the summary of the passage. So the next day on the um, proposition of Manius Pomponius, uh, the praetor, uh, the Senate decreed that a letter should be written to the dictator to the effect that if he thought it for the interest of the state, he should come together with the master of the horse and the second praetor, Marcus Marcellus, to hold the election for the succeeding consul in order that the fathers might learn from them in a person what condition the state was, take measures according to the circumstances, and all who were summoned came leaving the lieutenant generals to hold command of all of the legions. So the dictator, speaking briefly and modestly of himself, attributed much of the glory of the campaign to the master of the horse, Tiberius Sempronius, Gracchus. He then gave out the day for the comitia at which he consults uh, the consuls created were Lucius Posthumus and his in his absence being then employed in the government of the province of Gaul for the third time and Tiberius Sempronius Gracchus who was then master of the horse and uh, Carul uh, uh, Aedili, uh, Marcus uh, Valerius uh, Lavinius, um, Appius uh, Claudius uh, Pulcher, Quintus uh, Fulvius uh, Flaccus, and Quintus Ma Mucius uh, Scavola were then created praetors. After the election of the magistrates, uh, the dictator returned to his army, which was in the winter quarters of the Theanum. Uh, leaving his master of the horse at Rome to take the sense of the fathers relative to the armies to be enlisted and body to the service of the year. And he was about to enter upon the, ma the um, magistracy after a few days while busily occupied with these matters. Intelligence arrived of a fresh disaster, fortune uh, crowding into this year one calamity after another that Lucius Posthumus, uh, consul-elect, himself with all of his army, was destroyed in Gaul. He was to march his troops through a vast wood forest, which the Gauls called Litana. And on the right and left of his route, the natives had saved, uh, sawed the trees in such a manner that they continued standing upright but would fall when impelled by a slight force and Postumius had with him two Roman legions and besides had levied so great a number of allies along the Adriatic Sea that he led into the enemy's uh, country 25,000 men and as soon as his army entered the wood, the Gauls who were uh, posted around its extreme skirts pushed down the outmost of the uh, San trees which are failing on those next to them, and these again onto another and others, which of themselves stood tottering and scarcely maintained their position, crushed arms, men, horses, and 
in an indiscriminate manner so that uh, scarcely 10 men escaped. And for most of them uh, being killed by the trunks and broken uh, bows of the uh, trees, uh, the Gauls who uh, beset the wood uh, of all sides in arms, killed the rest, panic struck by so unexpected a disaster, a very small number who attempted to escape by a bridge were taken prisoners, being intercepted by the enemy who had taken possession of it before them. And here Postumius fell, fighting with all of his might to prevent his being taken. And the boy, having cut off his head, carried it to the spoils, um, stripped off his body in triumph into the most uh, sacred temple they had. And afterward, they cleansed the head according to their custom, and having uh, covered the skull with uh, chased gold, they used it as a cup for libation in their solemn uh, festivals and drinking cup for their high priests and other ministers of the temple. The spoils taken by the Gauls were no less than the victory, for though great numbers of the beasts were crushed by the falling trees, yet as nothing was scattered by flight, Everything else was found strewed along the whole line of the prostrate land. Well, this looks a lot like the um, illustration found on the uh, cauldron, uh, Gundestrup cauldron, that we have uh, with the uh, soldiers marching on with a, a, a tree trunk uh, and then um, a giant um, uh, throwing uh, the uh, deceased warriors into a cauldron. And so, in a way, uh, we, you can say that the Romans, uh, of course, um, they use this theme and this mythological theme to um, create more uh, pathos and mystery uh, surrounding um, the disappearance of um, their, um, uh, so their soldiers. So uh, one of the arguments, therefore, uh, traditionally used by academia to disqualify the antiquity of the Ogham is that it was synthetically crafted using tally marks. And the Latin alphabet uh, of the patrician monks uh, was um, the template for it. So what if it was the other way around? So this entails that there, there needs to be evidence of the Latin alphabet uh, being custom fitted to uh, this um, uh, cipher, you know, and indeed there is uh, such an example on closer um, scrutiny of the fuse uh, illustrated in the book of Balamo, we find the, the uh, Feta 85, and um, so if we look at it, um, indeed uh, this is um, a form of uh, alphabet um, which uh, does resemble um, ohms, um, but uh, it uh, picks up um, from the, the uh, Irish um, script, okay, Irish alphabet. So apart from B, of course, uh, many of the basic characters uh, have been uh, radically modified to fit the requir requirements uh, for the Latin alphabet. And so if we are to look at the uh, ohms, we have to really visualize this. Um, very uh, a few of um, the... Um, letters of the Roman alphabet um, um, do appear uh, consistently, you know, uh, and there are also new uh, letters uh, that are uh, very strange and hard to explain, and so this is what we're going to try to explain. Uh, okay, therefore we are only left to conclude that the presence of certain Latin sound attributions uh, to the uh, Ohm fuse uh, came later, and in proof of this, uh, are the few problematic letters uh, serving to uh, that no purpose in the Irish uh, uh, language, uh, such as, you know, later, uh, the early language, uh, the, the early uh, old Irish, uh, H, uh, N, G, uh, and S, T, or S, D, or whatever. The fact of the matter is uh, that uh, apart from H, uh, these consonantal clusters have no relevance, okay, for the Latin alphabet and Others argue that um, the later had to be uh, in use uh, in Old Irish anyway. Uh, in my mind, this is uh, a rush to judgment. Um, we will find uh, that 
there are left these are probably leftovers from an, an archaic uh, a tradition uh, that could be referred to as seed sounds or as in for the keys of divination for a cipher you know as we find this tradition also in uh, the, Ved the Vedic texts you know or the um, uh, Upanishads okay so let's go with the letter F if we need to explain you know this letter uh, Okay, because of course uh, the letter uh, is uh, evolved from V. Okay, which in turn uh, this V de derives from the Latin U, and uh, you know it can be noticed. Let's say if you take the word V, it was uh, written uh, you know with a U U I R, and so um, it appears as a V I R for man and. And since it, this um, initial uh, v, uh, U uh, became pronounced as a V, a v or a F, this is how the, um, the, uh, the V and the F evolved, okay? So when we have, let's say in Irish, when we have Fern or Finn, uh, that means um, originally in the Old Celtic it was a U. And uh, which now, uh, let's say in, in Welsh, it can be encoded as a W, uh, okay? So, um, also, uh, there is a tendency uh, in the Celtic idioms for U to later mutate into B, which can be noticed, uh, noticed with the, the words, um, the, from, let's say, from the old Celtic, Bodua, it becomes a bo for crow, the B-O-D-B. And then you have um, Sidwo for Sa, and um, S A D H for uh, the deer cow, you know, the female um, of um, the deer. Of the, uh... Okay, so on rare examples, a B can also morph uh, into a labial dental F expressed as a PH. We find uh, also the same, you know, pH could or could morph into an F. Okay, so this happens, you know, if we take the uh, the old Celtic bagos, it becomes fagos, fogos for birch tree. Other mutations occur with the B it follows um, goidelic uh, barcos with the. Uh, initial M, you know, it, it's it's a uh, nasalized. The B uh, becomes nasalized, and then we find an, a, an initial M before the B. Barcos, barcos, bark skiff. As with the uh, Celtiberian uh, um, name for ba Bardis, uh, you know, a, a woman bard, Bardisa becomes Bardisa. M B A R D I S S. A lady bard in Celtiberian. So let's go for the H now. While the symbol for H eta is found in the Greek alphabet, it has the value of E. The aspired uh, consonant H is probably from the Etruscan script or Elder Futark Hagal, since it does not appear in the Iberian syllabaries either. So in the Yolms, aspirated H follows the unvoiced sibilant S. And this is a normal, uh, it's a normal procession since H replaced the unvoiced palatal alveolar sibilant SH in the Iberian scripts, thus having the phonetic value of SH. So when we do an etymological, etymological run-up of the Gaelic letter name, we have Hwath from the old Irish Hwetes for Hawthorne, which at the old level was spelt Skuetes, S-C-U-E-T-E-S. Therefore, for a Pyrenean proto-ogam, H replaces the consonantal cluster SC. Okay, 
Originally, H was SC for Squietes. The mystic symbol Huath from Huatos, prediction, prophecy, came to be taken for the adjective Huatacos, Huataca, Huatacon, for monstrous, terrible. And in light of this, sk could have had corresponded to skath, skatos, obscurity, shadow, the adjective skatakos, darkish, somber, shadowy. And in Irish mythology, skatach and watach form a mother and daughter duo comparable to the Germanic Valkyries. And at the old level, the names of these tantric warriors, warrior witches, were Skataka and Wataka. Most evidently, this reasoning, when enforced by the symbolism of Hawthorne, since this tree was tradi traditionally linked to divination and sorcery. There we have it. So of NG, this ing, this unga. This biconsonant was had this biconsonant has baffled many since it is not found elsewhere other than with the futhach ing, also having the value of ng. And the Araisep indicates that when a weak vowel proceeds n, it is dropped, this being that the n is voiced and accentuated as n. Mm. Mm. For n in an on an un. Also not, noteworthy is the that in the Beth Louis Nyon the letters n and ng are placed in the third position of their ranks, along with the letter u. And again, this ng is linked to fatality as a symbol. And it goes way back to the common Indo-European period. In Vedic yoga, the salmon or seed sound, the seed sounds are the core elements of the Bija mantras, the germ expressions. And one of these is that of the Naga serpent syllable, NG. NGA, Nga, Nka. And this Nga syllable is said to trigger the Anahata, the heart chakra in Naga Yoga, and in the Yogam, the Ng, Ng, Ng is named the Nital, and stem, stems from Iniketalis, Iniketalis, which means immersed sedge, or water sedge, therefore, henceforth, read. The prefix ini is from inisma, of the old Celtic inisma, meaning immersed. And in old Celtic, nc plus u. So we have them tra tracked in at the third position, nc and u, because nc precedes ng. For enku, enku, anku, Fatality, unavoidable necessity, death was the expression of the fate fairy as she presided over this symbol. Okay, therefore, with the cranes again, we spoke of the cranes with the, the Greeks, the Hermes. There you have it. So it evolved into Ong, so in Gaelic, in the Old Irish, we have Ong. Okay, O-N-G, for chastisement, disease, restraint, and tribulation. So, ng is ng. Of S-T, okay, of the letter, cluster, the cluster, S-T, consonantal cluster. So, the T in the S-T cluster derives from the devoiced D in S-D. S-D results from the mutation of the letter D, which evolved to a Z and S. This is why in Gaelic it's often uh, mentioned that this letter, the S T, is a Z. 
okay, or for the Americans, a Z. Okay, so in Gaelic, as D was marked, uh, in Gaelic, in Gaelic, in continental uh, Gaelic, as D was marked as a D with a bar in it. It's a, it's a barred D, and it had the pronunciation of Z. Okay, and similar to the English Z, like for the, okay? But, you know, in French Canadian, uh, we French Canadians, we, we uh, have this distinction also, uh, the same as with the, um, the old Gallic distinctions, you know, for... Um, the, the name uh, Dewos uh, in Gaelic, it, it, it evolved into Dieu in French, you know, Dieu. Uh, but the French Parisian pronunciation is like for the Germanic D, you know, Dieu, Dieu, you know. And uh, but we have we, we kept this uh, this Gallic um, uh, um, pronunciation for this letter. And it, the same goes for the ST, you know, like for the, the first sound. OK. So in turn, the letter inside the word could also be written SS, and we often find this in, let's say, in, in epigraphy, in Gallic epigraphy, as with, uh, you know, for the, um, the feminine theonym uh, Sirona, you know, uh, the goddess Sirona, we find her also in, in Britain. Uh, Zirona, the starly, stellar. In uh, Iberian, it was uh, noted simply as a variant of uh, the sh, the s, uh, and translated as as a z, you know, as with the, the Gaelic. So it's interesting here that we already we have this notion. Uh, so it probably came from Iberian. It moved on to um, to Ireland. So thus, uh, streif, streif, dragina, or dragina. Blackthorn in old in the Ogham. Uh, for clarity's sake, um, so there herewith is a you know the the oricep, um, what letter, what character, what sound is that which uh, no word is ended and dinin disail of f, and what sharp sound is found with which uh, no strong word is begun and g. Uh, the five principal uh, vowels of the Orm. However, it was from the five persons who were noblest of them that they were named A, O, U, A, E, Owe. Others again say that seven, okay, uh, seven vowels, principal vowels are there and uh, from the seven persons that were the noblest, um, which, which we mentioned earlier, and so the expression "din in uh, um, makes it the, makes the most sense in that "din din in out of "nin," the letter "n," and "disel" out of the letter "sail," the letter "s," "sail," were interchangeable in order with uh, with a "fern," the letter "f." Moreover, Feda, the old Irish name for the letter, derives from fid, wood, thus connoting fid for knowledge and understanding. So, fid, wood, that is fid a, extent of them, since five form of a are in existence, a that nourishes, a that sings, a that sues, a that judges, a that sits, now, A that nourishes, for example, while it is on the mind, and A that sings at giving it, and A that sues while asking the reward for it, and A that considers about its greatness or its smallness, and A that sits after being paid its reward. So A from Ein, A-O-N, excellent, noble, illustrious, A-O, you know, the as, as for a prefix, uh, for here taken for Aub, Aub, Aib, A O I B H in Irish, uh, similitude uh, from Aiba, Aibo, the look, uh, the mean, the appearance, the form, the physiognomy, and the type. So here we have it. Uh, it explains it all for why A uh, 
sings and speaks and utters and so it's it's the mean m i e n this informs us that the device of poetic wordplay is the operational mechanism to operating the symbol sound system of the ohms harmony discernment where the good measure of natural law set up the druid philosophers set up by the druid philosophers the feminine turn and now having uh, meaning uh, the meaning of harmony poetry affluence wealth good understanding was used to define poetic art the sacred meter and anua lady poet a term pund which uh, an anamu um, for soul uh, in modern Welsh, uh, carries uh, anaf, uh, the, the meaning of uh, defect, uh, which derives from the old Celtic adjective anaos, for faulty or, you know, filthy rich. <laughs> Another crafty play on words involved uh, anaos, anao for uh, anawa, anawan for uh, discordant, quarrelsome, disagreeing. Uh, the uh, word plays are very important uh, and for the word in, in uh, of course in, in old irish we have imertas uh, which means um, playing an exploit a contrivance uh, machination trickery so it derives from the old goidelic uh, verb uh, ambi uh, berini uh, meaning to use or to employ uh, this uh, poetic art of alliteration of assonances was termed uh, anawitu for the record, uh, the surnament was dironatu, um, and it is uh, mental faculty. This uh, mental faculty was called um, barnon uh, to the neuter gender, and the Irish equivalent for harmony was siohin, uh, uh, adjective uh, peaceful. Uh, for harmony, it seemed to derive from the old Celtic suligu uh, harmony, hence the adjective suliguos. Uh, Again, the Arai Sepananes for the entire quote, uh, you, you know, you look at it, you look at it, it up, it's all there. And of course, much of the speculation here derives from the interpretation of the medieval poets, grammarians uh, using Latin and Greek, and the correct old Irish term for fundamentum had to be a fotad, which translates as foundation support establishing and nourishment and the word uh, describes the old uh, celtic wotados uh, uh, for tad wotadis also uh, the theonym for the three fundamental deities of daily time again the speculation of the nature of the wood both natural and artificial and also cosmic as a cusp for cos uh, for um, uh, a co cosmic house you know for uh, astrology so um, this about sums it up uh, for these uh, peculiar letters um, which uh, you know I have interpreted here for you and um, of course um, uh, for the keys of uh, um, divination uh, you know um, there is uh, there are many texts that we can find you know um, attributed to Amargan and um, others um, that we find also in the Vedas uh, that pretty much um, explain exactly the same thing, you know, as uh, the, the term, uh, let's say, um, um, uh, Akshara, you know, and um, Yokra, Exi, uh, uh, they're both um, etymolog etymologically linked um, uh, in the old Indo-European um, uh, roots, you know, the notion that uh, there was an Indo-European past tradition uh, had to be carried on. And since we, you know, given the etymology of Yocha, we have the old Celtic name. But Yocha was uh, spelt, um, you know, in uh, Gaelic, uh, E-O-C-H-R-A, which in the Old Celtic was Akshara, Akshara. So Akshara um, is pretty much the same as, as the Sanskrit Akshara, you know. And um, in, for the um, the uh, this was a Bija mantra, okay. And for the uh, Aksharya was um, they were the um, or the Aksharyo were the um, 
the keys, uh, therefore the keys of divination. So uh, I'm not going to give the whole rundown, um, you know, of um, what uh, the um, Book of Ballymoat uh, says about um, each of these um, uh, these letters, uh, you know, in the uh, Gaelic sense. Um, of course, all of these can um, be traced back to um, the old uh, Celtic roots, which is not hard to do. And um, uh, as I had mentioned in my book, uh, those who want to really look into it further, there is the, um, uh, by the, the book published at um, McFarland Press, uh, which is the Celtic astrology, and it's uh, ancient uh, Celtic, Celtic astrology. It's not the, um, the modern uh, Celtic astrology that you find. It's based on um, um, the same comparative um, methodology I used um, using uh, Panofsky and um, Dumézil. And so um, it sums it up for this talk. And so I will um, leave you um, below a link uh, for an academia paper, uh, which probably needs to be, uh, uh, you know, um, mise à jour. You know, and um, so um, I hope you enjoyed, and hope to see you next time for another talk. Au revoir, les amis.